If I may have your attention, please. At this time, we're going to begin the services here in our chapel for Mr. Joel Schwartz. As we begin the service, I would ask if any of you might happen to have a cell phone or any other noise-making device, please turn them off now. Officiating the, serv the service here today is Rabbi Lisa Bellows from Congregation Beth Am, and the rabbi will begin the service assisting the family in the tradition of Shiva. If I could ask the two family members wearing ribbons to stand together at this time. Adonai ma adam v'tadehu bein enosh v'techashavehu. Adonai, what are we that you have regard for us? What are we that you are mindful of us? We are like a breath. Our days are like a passing shadow. We come and go like grass, which in the morning shoots up renewed, and in the evening fades and withers. You cause us to turn to dust, saying, Return, O mortal creatures, would that we were wise, that we understood where we are going. For when we die, we carry nothing away. Our glory does not accompany us. Mark the wholehearted, and behold the upright. They shall have peace. We're here today to celebrate the life of Joel Schwartz. Joel lived his life dedicated to family and to career. He lived for moments with you, family, and friends, and also for the creativity and the passion of work. So today we say goodbye to him and we celebrate his life and his gift of love and companionship. Joel was the beloved husband for 56 years to Joyce, the loving father of Brian, cherished father-in-law to Susie, proud grandfather of Charlie and Evan, dear brother of Sam, brother-in-law to Rita, fond uncle of William and Shannon, David, Elizabeth, and the late Nancy. For Joel's love that united us in life and which death cannot sever, for his companionship that we shared along life's path and which continues through the tenderness of memory, for the gifts of his heart and mind that brought us joy and happiness and is now a precious remembrance, for all these and more we give thanks. Times like this, we read psalms. We turn to psalms for strength and comfort. King David, who our tradition teaches, is the author of the psalm. was a man who struggled with issues of faith, of love, life, and loss. You have the English of the 23rd Psalm on the inside cover. 
of your leaflet. I'll read the beginning in Hebrew, and then please join me in the English. Adonai ro'i lo echsar bino deshe yerbitseni alme menachot yenachaleni. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, but life is a journey a going, a growing from stage to stage, from childhood to maturity and youth to age, from innocence to awareness and ignorance to knowing, from foolishness to discretion, and then perhaps to wisdom, from weakness to strength or strength to weakness, from health to sickness, and back we pray to health again from offense to forgiveness, from loneliness to love, from joy to gratitude, from pain to compassion, and grief to understanding, from fear to faith, from defeat to defeat to defeat, until looking backward or ahead, we see that victory lies not at some high place along the way, but in having made the journey stage by stage, a sacred pilgrimage. Birth is a beginning and death a destination, but life is a journey, a going, a growing, stage by stage, from birth to death, to life everlasting. In ancient people, we are well acquainted with grief and with the valley of the shadows. Death and sorrows are not strangers to us, yet the centuries have taught us that a good name endures beyond the grave and that there is strength and faith. With Job we say, Adonai Natan, God you have given. You gave us a loved one who will never be forgotten. For all that was good and enduring in Joel's life, we offer the deepest thanks of our hearts. Adonai Lakach, we pray for the strength to turn our broken hearts into an altar of trust before which we acknowledge your sovereignty and love as we now say, Yehi Shem Adonai Mevorach, blessed be the name of God now and forever. In the book of Ecclesiastes, we read that there's a time to keep silent and there's a time to to speak, to share words and memories, I invite Joel's son, Brian, to come forward. Good afternoon, and thank you for coming. Joel Schwartz, just Joel Schwartz, no middle initial, just two syllables, simple, elegant, gentle and understated, wise and witty, a man of the land, a family man, a handy man, a beat reporter turned businessman, known as Yidl in his youth, dull to his beloved wife Joyce and papa to Charlie and Evan, a mentor and a true mensch, a man with an enviable mix of grit, grace, guts and gravitas, that's my dad. That's Joel Schwartz. From a hard scrabble upbringing in Chicago and Rockford, he was lifted up early and often by his beloved mother, Rose, <clears throat> who, as I gather, aspired to something bigger, something better for Joel and his younger brother, Sam. 
I imagine that's why she encouraged uh, their entry into local contests and school events. Uh, these included uh, uh, singing, acting, and other thespian-like uh, activities that I so, so wish had been recorded for posterity, but unfortunately were not. Uh, another reason driving this activity, I think, was the, uh, the almighty dollar. I, I know times were tough, and Joel and Sam together were quite, quite a cute combination. In fact, my dad shared uh, many stories of how he, both individually and working alongside his brother, hustled to help out the family. Uh, like birds of prey, they'd target the taverns of uh, industrial Rockford on Friday nights where they'd sell local union-leaning newspapers to the masses for a quarter each. And sometimes the overwhelmingly positive disposition of their quote-unquote customers resulted in much more generous tips, which was uh, music to the ears of Sam, of Sam and Joel. Growing up, Dad's family split time between Chicago and Rockford. His parents ran multiple grocery stores. When Joel's father took ill with TB, it was off to the family farm in Marengo. Dad recalled early morning rising for feeding and milking and lots of other labor-intensive activities like tar on the roof and installing fence posts. No day at the park, that's for sure. Uh, on occasion, he'd get a little nostalgic and wax fondly about the one-room schoolhouse that he attended along with several of his cousins who I see over there. Um, a love of a love of news and language, as well as a growing need for independence, led Dad to an entry-level gig at a local newspaper, uh, the Rockford Register, as he moved from East High School to Rockford College. While Dad's role and uh, sorry, while Dad's role and responsibilities continued to grow as he neared college graduation, the paper actually wanted him to stay. Uh, he ultimately arrived at a crossroad. He got accepted to a master's program in New York, and ultimately figuring that if he can make it there, he can make it anywhere, uh, he took the, the road less traveled and opted for the bright lights of New York City. And it's there, in the great state of New York, where my father's story takes a significant turn. It starts with a chance meeting in a Brooklyn-bound subway car where he decides to engage a young secretary immersed in the latest James Bond novel during her evening commute and initially not willing to give dad the time of day. Although thankfully, Joe was persistent and Joyce Antine was able to tear herself away from that novel long enough to share her correct digits, no ghosting back then, and, uh, and, cha and, and change her life and his life forever. Quick shout out to New York here. Uh, gets a ton of credit. It's New York when my dad graduates with a master's in political science. It's in New York when my dad becomes a cub reporter for Time Magazine. Mom and dad get married in October of 1965 and start their married life together. Um, it's in New York when my dad gets tapped to develop the initial marketing promotional materials for a children's hospital in Memphis that Danny Kay is planning. It, we all know it today is St. Jude's. It's in, it's in New York when my dad joins the phone company and stays there for a quarter century, rising through the ranks. And it's in New York where I enter the picture. And from there, we're off to the races, as they say. With mom and dad both nurturing me, helping this shy only child to grow, thrive, and mature, although my wife might argue about the maturity part, <laughs> while supporting me in all my activities, plays, assemblies, swimming, peewee football, summer camp, scouts, more, you name it. There was a dad letting me mow the grass for the first time when I was nine, pushing that heavy monster of a machine that he'd always have to start for me, that ripcord. They didn't have any starters back then, so I could never start it. Um, he let me help him on his various uh, uh, home improvement projects. He had all these great tools, and he shared them and taught me how to use some of them. I never could do it as well as he could. Um, and while he was played by back problems for many years of his adult life, that didn't stop him from participating and being active in my life and after school activities. I remember him being on the fundraising committee for our temple on Long Island at nearly all my sporting events and was also there and most importantly was part of the Boy Scout Troop 233 Transportation Committee for 1987 to 19, uh, 1986 to 1988, which saw a lot of camping and a lot of good memories made. And he withstood the babbling away on whatever young adult topics were going on in the late 1980s on Long Island, which was usually the Mets or the latest Nintendo video games. But he never complained and said that he'd rather be golfing or relaxing at home. He made sure he was always present, always there for me when I needed him. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Mm. 
rabbi mentioned dad's focus on career, and that was something that he really, really took to heart. You know, and uh, his career at the phone company uh, really took off. And uh, in late in 1988, we moved to northern New Jersey. Uh, he got a temporary five-year five-year stint, and uh, it was a really wonderful time. He had endured long commutes all his adult life, and for those five years, he had a much-needed reprieve, a 10-minute commute out the door and back. Plus, he had a staff of a dozen writers with corporate responsibilities that included design, layout, and printing of the company's annual report, and he loved it all, from the strategy and prep to the connecting and interviewing with stakeholders to making sure they got all the details right. He even took me one time to the late night printing press to make sure that the first copies of the annual report uh, were, were not going to blur and all the colors were going to look good and everything was in its right place. So after retiring, Dad didn't slow down. He kept going with any number of household projects to keep our New Jersey home ready for the next hosting gig, whether it was Memorial Day, Labor Day, um, or but really what was most special was our Fourth of July celebrations where the party really got started, where the uh, backyard truly sparkled. He joined the first wave of day trading, uh, continuing at his uh, long-standing investment efforts uh, with the goal of finding the next diamond in the rough, and was so pleased when he saw one of his dark horses come to fruition and take off. You know, he loved to write. He maintained correspondence with a variety of friends, acquaintances, peers, and former coworkers. He kept copies of their letters, and in many ca cases, copies of what he sent to them, um, which also might be somewhat to my wife's chagrin right now, but we'll, we'll get through that. Um, uh, with the arrival of Charlie and Evan, uh, mom and dad wanted to be able to dive into their roles as grandparents. And seeing these two beautiful boys a couple times a year just wasn't going to cut it. So nearly a half century away, Joel returned home to Illinois. My folks moved into a Huntley-based retirement community called Sun City. Here, they weaved and wrote their final amazing chapter. Along with doting on their grandchildren, their time in Huntley brought wonderful friendships, bus trips to destinations both common, shout out to Branson, Missouri, and unique, they explored the Amish country in Shipsawana, Indiana. And also this time brought mom many Mahjong championships and a little extra money in her pocket. When mom passed last October, dad referred to her as a golden soul. His description was apt and accurate in so many ways. For something to truly shine, it must be appreciated for the light and the warmth that radiates. For my, for, my, for my dad, his appreciation was so devout. Love was so boundless. Reliance was so strong that ultimately he couldn't go on. Couldn't exist without the benefit of that blessed glow. And knowing the type of person my mother was, I don't know that I can really blame. Mm. And while many of us stepped up and stepped in to support Joel in his time of mourning, the efforts of his health aide, Jumi, particularly deserve special recognition here for the care and support she gave him. It was just too tough for Joel to go on. But now I think we say a sweet, sweet goodbye to my father. When I think of him, it will often be tied to how he broke the mold. He was a son of Illinois, but also a tried and true New Yorker. More liberal in his youth, he leaned a little more conservative in his golden years. A man who could weave a good story and have the entire, the entire room or the entire backyard hanging on his next word. He was equally just as happy spending an afternoon in the backyard with his tools his shmatas, his long-brimmed hats and long sleeve shirts to protect him from the sun, with his cat nuggets scampering around, keeping him company while he tackled the next project on his ever-growing to-do list. I'm going to wrap up and turn things over to Charlie in a minute, but before uh, his grandson Charlie, but before I do, I wanted to share two memories. I'm sorry this is taking a little long, but uh, he's worth it. Uh, certainly not one to be starstruck by famous people. I get a kick out of Dad's Walter Mitty-like experiences where his past crossed with a varied and colorful assortment of individuals. I just found out recently that uh, I never heard the story before, but Dad did a group uh, interview with uh, Bobby Kennedy at around maybe 64, 65, and uh, that was pretty amazing to me. He crossed paths with Neil, uh, astronaut Neil Armstrong when he was honored by the phone company in the early 1980s. And he saw, he shouted out to 
chicken magnet Frank Perdue on the streets of New York, totally randomly. Was it on your wedding day? Yeah. It was on your wedding day. <laughs> and to lastly, to ha having Andy Williams do a mea culpa about the slow service at his Branson restaurant, and the group, I think, all ate for free or had lots of, uh, lots of things. So um, most famously, or inf infam infamously, Oh, I actually, I, have, I even have one better. I forgot about this. Dad tapped, the Dad tapped the shoulder of former Beatle John Lennon in the early 1970s to wish him well in his efforts to become a U.S. citizen. As mom was secretary at a music publisher uh, in New York City at the time, they just happened to cross paths on the dance floor at an industry event, and my dad took the opportunity. He took the opportunity. I guess that's one of the best lessons that we can take from Joel. When the chance arises. The chances arise, the chance arises, take it. And in the best case scenario, you've already done your homework, the hard work beforehand, so that when that moment or opportunity presents itself, you're already there, ready to take it on. In talking with my cousin Bill these past few days, he shared a memory. Sunday night dinners that my parents would host more on Long Island um, after the pop and circumstance of the meal was done, dessert was served, the coffee was around, and it was time for the games, the board games or cards or whatnot, dad would ever so slightly saunter off to the lower levels for either Louis Rukeyser or uh, 60 Minutes or uh, most of the time just to work, to get ready for uh, the week ahead, to prep, to make sure he was ready for those, for those sessions on Monday, for those uh, out of left field requests that were coming on Tuesday, and he just wanted to be ready. And um, I just, I just, I think that's a great lesson to, to, to take away. And uh, I think that's really, really sweet. And the final act that I wanted to share, um, dad, dad, as I mentioned, dad kept a few things. And one of the things that we came across was a stack of cards, cards that I had sent to him and Susie and I had sent to him for his birthdays and for Father's Day. And I found a card from uh, October of 97. And I'm going to finish up by reading this, or trying to read it, I should say. Pop. More than any other time in my life, these past few years have been a time for under understanding and reflecting on what you've meant to me, and haven't in, in shaping the man that I just in shaping the man that I am just starting to become. If I've never said it before, let me say this to you: Thanks, thanks for raising me right, raising me fair, raising me to take responsibility for my life. I truly love the life I have, and I have you and mom. To, to thank you for that. I love you, Pop. And really, I couldn't have said it better. I really couldn't have said it any better myself. Charlie, you want to come up here? I do okay? Mm -hmm. Talk a little fast? Mm -hmm. All right, good. Nice essay. Right. Hello, everybody. I just wanted to say a few words about my grandfather. My papa was one of the most gentle, loving, and interesting people to be around. And as he said that he, that my grandpa grew up as a grew up and made his career as a journalist, he always had the most intriguing stories of his time working there, and I always loved listening to them. I am and always will be grateful for the sixteen and a half years that I got to spend with him and my grandma, and I wish I had so much more. <sighs> One of the things I'll miss most was his sarcasm. As mentioned before, his journalist stories and the many, and funny story, the many times that I would go over to his house and he wouldn't, in Huntley, and he would pretend to not know who I was throughout the years. <laughs> I'll treasure the memories of the many visits I took to their house when I got my driver's permit, our trips to DC, Disney World, Dyke Park, and the many Hanukkahs and other, and other holidays we celebrated with them. I'll carry on his memory with me, and I will think of nothing but happy memories when he comes to my mind. And I would now I'd like to invite um, Joel's nephew, Bill Briata, uh, to say a few words. To say a few words, yes. <laughs> A few days ago, Brian watched a video that was taken on Joel's 80th birthday. There were a lot of people in the room who all knew Joyce and Joel, but didn't necessarily know each other. So Brian stood up 
and asked everyone to briefly introduce themselves and to say one word which they felt best described Joel. Brian went first and said patience. I don't remember the word I used that day, but now that I've had time to think about it, the word I will use today is gentleman. It's hard to describe a man's life in one word, but I think in this case it's appropriate. A gentleman means what he says and says what he means. A gentleman is a decent person who respects others and is respected by his family, friends, and neighbors. He is kind and generous. A gentleman is chivalrous and polite. A gentleman puts his family before himself. He is a lo loving husband and father. A gentleman keeps his promises. Joe Schwartz was a true gentleman. I've known Joyce and Joel for as long as I can remember. They are no longer here physically, but there are so many happy and vivid memories. They will always be present in my life as I sh am sure they will be in yours. There's one memory I'd like to share with you about Joel. Joel was always busy. He left little time for himself. One of the few exceptions to this was watching his favorite TV show, Wall Street Week with Louis Rukeyser. This show was broadcast for 30 years from 1970 to 2000, and I'm pretty darn sure that Joel watched every single episode. When I was old enough, I was allowed to sit in the den and watch the show with him. Louis Rukeyser was famous for his quips and puns, and Joel loved it. Over the years, there were thousands of them. Many of them were duds, but many were clever and funny. As an example, when answering a letter from an investor who wanted to invest in a hairpiece manufacturer, Mr. Rukeyser quipped, if your money seems to be hair today and gone tomorrow, we'll try to make it grow back by giving the bald facts and how to get your investment to pay. <laughs> Joel would slap his thigh and laugh out loud when Lou ripped a good one and, really loved be and I really loved being there with him, enjoying a laugh. Thank you, Joel. Thank you for everything. I love you, and I hope you and Joyce are together again for eternity. Beautiful, and um, Joel's legacy that he still makes us smile through you is big. He, his legacy is that he showed you what it means to love family and to be there He showed you what a love for family can look like. He did for you. He wanted only the best for you. He was able to love you, and he saw you. He was hands-on, meticulous. He enjoyed life because you were in it. Joel was a blessing and an inspiration. May his name and his memory be for good and for righteousness, and so the world remains better because he was in it. The 23rd Psalm that we said just a minute ago said to remind all of us that we are never alone, even when we might feel like it. The next prayer is called El Malay Rachamim, and it is just for Joel, 
that he be received, continue to be received with great care and tenderness. Uh, please rise. El mor male rachamim shochen bamromim hametze menacha nechona tachat kanfe hashachina im kedoshimu tahorim kezohar haraki hamazirim et nishmat yido shahalach leolamo. Baal harachamim, Yafsirei hu beseter kenafav le olamim, Veitvor bitvor hachayim et nishmato, Adonai hu nachalato, Vianuach beshalom al mishkevo, Venomar, Amen. Compassionate God, Eternal Spirit of the Universe, Grant perfect rest in your sheltering presence to Joel Schwartz, who has entered eternity. O God of mercy, let him find refuge in the shadow of your wings. Let his soul be bound up in the bond of everlasting life. God is his inheritance. May he rest in peace. We say together, Amen. Please be seated. I'm sorry, don't be seated. If you're able, please rise. El Mole Rachamim asks God to receive Joel in tenderness and care, and the mourner's Kaddish, which will be the concluding prayer, reminds us of how fortunate we are to have experienced life with Joel. You can join me. That is on the back side of the leaflet. Yitkadal v'yitkadash me raba be'alma divrach hirute v'lemlich machute b'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chaye d'chol beit Yisrael ba'agala uv'izman kari v'imru amen. Yehe Shme Raba Mivorach Leolam Olome Omaya Yit Parach Vishtabach Vit Paar Vit Roman Vit Nase Vit Adar Vit Ale Vit Alal Shme Dukudisha Brihu Leela Min Ko Birchata Vishirata Tushbachata Venechamata Damiran Beoma Vimru Amen Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Vechayim Alenu, Velko Yisrael, Vimru Amen. O Se Shalom Bimromav, Huya Ase Shalom, Alenu, Velko Yisrael, Vimru Amen. May God send peace to all who mourn and comfort all of us who are bereaved, and together we say, Amen. This concludes the service here in our chapel. The interment will be private. Uh, The family invites all of you in attendance to join them immediately at Continental Restaurant, 788 South Buffalo Grove Road here in Buffalo Grove. This is Buffalo Grove Road. Uh, The restaurant is at the intersection of Buffalo Grove Road and Dundee Road in in the middle of the mall. Also for those in attendance and for those watching online, The family has asked that memorial contributions in Mr. Schwartz's name be made to St. Jude Children's Hospital, 501 St. Jude Place in Memphis, Tennessee. For those in attendance, that information is in the service folder. If you did not receive one, they are available. For those watching online, that information is available on the website you are currently on. I want to thank everyone for uh, joining today as well as those online, and we will be terminating the online feed soon. If you please rise as the family and rabbi are escorted from the chapel.
would ask everyone to please go directly to your cars and go to the gathering if you wish. The family will not be greeting any longer at the funeral home today.